Greetings, boils and ghouls. I'm your host, Dr. Wolfiel, and welcome to another entry of Crypt Tuesdays, where I provide retrospectives and reviews of HBO's classic Tales from the Crypt episodes and the comics that inspired them. In today's video, I'm covering Season 1, Episode 6 of Tales from the Crypt, Collection Completed. <laughs> The final episode of Season 1. Yeah, Season 1 of Tales from the Crypt is the shortest season at six episodes, which is less than half the usual number most TV shows would get per season at the time. You could consider Season 1 of Tales from the Crypt a pilot season. The show was an anthology series, after all. You can't properly test the waters of an anthology series with a single pilot episode, and HBO didn't have the prestige TV cachet it has now to potentially throw money away at new shows. Hell, press Prestige TV wasn't even really a thing yet. You gotta start somewhere. Anyway, before I delve into the episode, like always, let's begin by dissecting the original EC comic story that inspired it. What have you done to my babies? Collection Completed is based on the story of the same name that originally appeared in Vault of Horror number 14, published in June 1952 and drawn by Ghastly Graham Ingalls, one of EC Comics' best horror artists and the man who created The Witch, one of EC Comics' three ghoulunatic hosts who honestly looks a lot more like the TV version of the Crypt Keeper than the actual comic version of the Crypt Keeper. The comic Crypt Keeper just looks like a regular old fuck. Naturally, Collection Completed is hosted by The Witch, and tells the story of a middle-aged couple by the name of Anita and Jonah Tillman. The story is one of the more disturbing entries in the EC Comics canon. Anita loves animals and takes in a stray kitten she names Mew Mew. But Anita's husband Jonah is irrationally against her owning pets and constantly berates her for it. Jonah is a huge piece of shit, it's safe to say. Anita only ever has one pet at a time too, a fish and then a canary before she got Mew Mew. So it's not like her pet ownership is out of control or anything. Thing. So Jonah just can't stand his spouse being happy, and he decides to take up a hobby of his own, taxidermy. But Jonah ain't gonna do the kinda sorta ethical version of taxidermy and just wait for the animals to die first. No sir, he traps and kills the poor things. The taxidermy thing is pretty much just an excuse to kill small animals and pass it off as a hobby without people assuming Jonah's going to carry out a mass shooting later down the line. It's a straightforward story, but pretty upsetting thinking of cute, defenseless animals being killed. And Ghastly's art really captures the emotional distress that Jonah puts Anita through. It's less scary and more sad overall, and the sadness culminates in Jonah killing Anita's beloved kitten Mew Mew and stuffing the poor creature. But instead of just divorcing him like she should have done earlier, Anita goes insane, murders her husband, and taxidermies him. You know the greatest insult of all, though? Anita does a shitty job at stuffing Jonah, much in the way he probably did a shitty job stuffing her over the years. The HBO adaptation of Collection Completed was appropriately directed by Mary Lambert, the director of the original Pet Cemetery adaptation, with this episode coming out a couple months after Pet Cemetery released. Ah! How did that thing get in here? This episode is a technically faithful adaptation of the original comic story in the sense that it tells the story of a husband who takes up taxidermy to torment his wife, but there are some pretty big changes thrown into the mix. Instead of a middle-aged couple, the couple is elderly, with the husband celebrating his retirement at the start of the tale. Day I hit 65, I'm out of there. Never mind, just throw the old duff away. The husband's name has slightly been changed from Jonah to Jonas, and he's played by M. Emmett Walsh. Walsh, who is surprisingly and thankfully still alive and active, but with our luck lately, that'll probably change real soon. The wife, Anita, is played by the not-so-lucky late Audra Lindley, who played Mrs. Roper on Three's Company. But the party! Too tired. Too tired. Now, in the comic, Anita only had one pet at a time. Totally reasonable. But in the episode, Anita has dozens of pets. It's like she's Jim Carrey in that one movie I can't remember the title of. But Daddy's called the party off. The dynamic is totally different, and the episode focuses more on Jonas's descent into madness. Here's your breakfast, honey. Jonas was never at home before, but now that he's retired, all the pets that Anita used to occupy her time really start to get on his nerves. What's that dog eating? A steak? These are my friends. 
It's not just the pets, though. Anita barely acknowledges Jonas and treats him as if he's also an animal, feeding him a pill in his food, for God's sake. God damn it, Anita! I'm not like your dogs or your cats! You don't have to put my medicine in food! The episode aims to make Jonas more of a sympathetic character compared to his comic counterpart, reframing things so his wife seems like a quirky lunatic. Nita! This is cat food! Oh, I'm sorry. And Jonas feels useless without something to occupy his time with. The Jonah of the comics was just an abusive maniac from the start who still had a job, but killed animals purely for fun right away. An addition to the story, beyond all the extra pets, is Jonas's upbeat neighbor Roy, who really insists on Jonas taking up model kits as a hobby. I brought you the B-1 bomber this time. Hey, thanks. Can't wait to get at it. All the additions just seem like fluff, ultimately, and the episode mainly feels like a sitcom with an odd couple scenario. The more comedic tone might be due to the episode being written by noted Saturday Night Live writer A. Whitney Brown, with this episode being Brown's only credit writing for a non-sketch comedy or talk show. God damn it all, you have to make me say it, don't you? All right, I have to sit down. It's a surprisingly light-hearted tone given Mary Lambert directed the bleak Pet Cemetery the same year. Thankfully, the performances of Walsh and Lindley are great. You name this dog Jonas? Well, he reminded me of you. They hold the whole thing together. I could have seen this just being a really good pilot for a sitcom about a retired man having to finally get to know his wife after 47 years. She may not be used to having you around the house all day. The horror doesn't really emerge until the last five minutes of the story. Jonas finally snaps and decides to kill and taxidermy all of his wife's many pets, but it's honestly hard to believe, even for Tales from the Crypt. Anita is obsessed with her dozens of pets. There's no way she wouldn't notice them all getting killed, especially since it happens in the span of a few hours. How does a guy kill, stuff, and mount dozens of animals in such a short time without anybody noticing? The decision to just have Jonas kill and taxidermy all the animals at once off camera was probably done because they decided it would be too upsetting watching Jonas put his wife in so much emotional distress all while killing little animals throughout the story. So they decided to just focus more on the comedy and make the horror at the end too ridiculous to be taken seriously. But come on, if you're gonna reduce the horror of a seven page comic story, you might as well just pick a different story to adapt into an episode. I mean, you got the director of Pet Cemetery. you're gonna waste her time on some gag where a guy takes a shower but there's a fish in the tub? What the hell are you trying to do here? Well, at least Mew Mew the cat survives in the TV version, with Anita managing to rescue one pet from her husband, and the ending is ultimately the same, with Jonas crudely stuffed and stitched up. The makeup folks really made the most out of the one moment of a dead guy in this whole fucking episode. He's much happier. Oh, he really is. Crypt Keeper's wraparound segments are mostly just the usual murder puns, but they're pretty good murder puns. Jonas learned that a hobby can be very self-fulfilling, as long as you're not too stuffy about it. And we do get a brief appearance from his pet dog, Peeves. Peeves. Oh, I get it now. It's another pun. Pet Peeves. Oh, Crypt Keeper, you funny little piece of shit. Collection Completed is a great EC comic story, but the adaptation in Episode 6, the finale of Tales from the Crypt's first season, leaves a whole lot to be desired as a horror story. It's pretty fun and it has some moments, but it's just way too much buildup with very little payoff. I give Tales from the Crypt Season 1, Episode 6, Collection Completed, two Crypts out of five. If you liked this video, like it, and if you loved it, click the subscribe and bell buttons for more vids. I'd also like to thank these fine folks pledged my shout-out tier on Patreon for all their kind support. Videos like this wouldn't be possible without all their help. Thank you for watching, see you next time. Dr. Wolfiel is signing out.